like he just pulled a body out of his car and it has no head. I don't know what is going on. Okay, where'd he go? Right here, stop, 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 stop. On July 28th, 2021, onlookers in Shakopee, Minnesota would witness a man removing the body of a headless woman from his car. That man would later be identified as Alexis Sabora Viltrez, an illegal immigrant from Cuba. Alexis seemed to have a life on the road. He was living in a travel lodge motel nearby with a girlfriend of his, America Thayer. Police recordings investigating the incident hint that they had been living there since December of 2020. People who interacted with Alexis felt uncomfortable, to say the least. Alexis's character fits his criminal record as well, as he has multiple convictions in Minnesota and Louisiana for arson, driving under the influence, fleeing a police officer, and domestic abuse. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I did. I tried talking to them. Did it happen just right now here? Yes. Holy shit. Is that real? Or is that fake? Looks real to me. Alexis's domestic abuse records span as far back as 2009. At that time, he was arrested for preventing his then-girlfriend from leaving their vehicle by pulling on her hair. He also has another domestic abuse charge in 2011 with a different past living girlfriend. For this girlfriend, he was charged with attempted murder, second-degree kidnapping, false imprisonment with a dangerous weapon, and domestic abuse battery by strangulation. His girlfriend from 2011 was found with a swollen face and a lacerated arm. Reports indicate that the extreme abuse happened in that case due to a belief Alexis had, that his then-girlfriend was cheating on him. Alexis reportedly threw his victim on a bed, suffocated her with a pillow, and repeatedly punched through the pillow, swelling her right eye and lips. He then grabbed a large knife, repeatedly told her he was going to kill her, and attempted to stab her causing the laceration in her arm. Eventually, Alexis's knife broke and the victim was chased throughout their home. Alexis resorted to using a pair of scissors as a weapon. Holes caused by the knife and scissors could be seen throughout the home, including in a door and parts of the bed. A third roommate called the police during this altercation and Alexis threatened to kill his victim and his roommate if they spoke to the police. After these incidents, ICE had intervened and tried to deport Alexis. However, his home country of Cuba wouldn't approve the necessary travel documents, forcing him to stay within the U.S. Eventually, Alexis was released on an order of supervision. Fast forward to 2017, and Alexis would have a new girlfriend by the name of America Thayer. On July 23rd of that year, America would call law enforcement after a domestic dispute with Alexis. Reportedly, Alexis became angry because he thought she was speaking with another man at the bar they were both patronizing. When police arrived on scene for that case, Alexis had pinned down America and forced his hand over her mouth because he did not want her speaking with law enforcement. For that incident, Alexis was arrested and a pre-trial no-contact order was put in place. However, just three days later, America then wrote a handwritten note asking to have it removed, saying, I need to be in contact with him to help us, and we will go to any treatment recommended. She highlights that they didn't have problems for four years. Unfortunately, it is common for victims of domestic abuse to downplay their own abuse. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, victims of domestic abuse may have a hard time leaving a relationship due to the fear of retaliation, due to manipulation tactics that may make them believe they lack safety or support outside of their partner, or due to mixed feelings of good times or love for their partner despite the abuse. One study listed in the U.S. Department of Justice interviewed men who had killed their partners. Most often, the precipitating events that led to the murder were either threats of separation by their partner or actual separations. Unfortunately, on July 28, 2021, Alexis would contribute to that statistic by killing America and discarding her body in broad daylight. Multiple witnesses were interviewed at the time, and one had even recorded a video on Snapchat of America's head on the road and the rest of her body being thrown out of the car. And was he the only one in the vehicle? No, well, there's this body laying on the ground he had a he had a huge knife he was chopping at something in the car had a huge knife and he, yes and he tossed the knife into the grass he pulled the, what looks like a head with hair out of the body out of the car threw it on the ground and then pulled this body out of the car okay so he threw the head out in this area yes it's on the well it's on the ground shortly after that scene police scattered to find the man responsible recording Where'd he go? Right here. Stop, 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 stop. Get on the ground! Get on the Now! On the ground! Now! Get on the ground! Put your hands out where we can see them! Out like an airplane! 
airplane. Oh, like an airplane. Put them out. Do not move. Do not move. Don't move. Yep, got him. Do not move. Translator. Later at the station, Alexis confessed to killing America. According to detective notes submitted to the court for evidence, Alexis is captured on video being asked what happened to her head, and Alexis replied, making a cutting motion with his hand across his throat. After the interrogation, investigators interviewed acquaintances of Alexis and America for more information. Patrons of the travel lodge Alexis and America were staying at had noted Alexis had threatened to cut America's head off days prior. Witnesses at the lodge also noted Alexis frequently carried a large knife with him and spent his time in the woods near the hotel. A friend of America's also noted that Alexis faked being mentally ill in order to deceive the courts and receive lesser charges for crimes he had committed in the past, citing Alexis's charge for arson. For that charge, Alexis allegedly set fire to an apartment complex to protest law enforcement in the wake of the George Floyd incident. Now in 2023, Alexis was convicted and found guilty of murder. However, Alexis's defense pushed for the case to consider his sanity. When this happens, the court breaks down the verdict into two parts. The first part asks if the defendant committed the crime. For this, Alexis was found guilty. The second part asks if the defendant was mentally ill under the Minnesota standards. The court found Alexis fit those standards for this case. Alexis is still guilty of committing the crime, but the office will label him as mentally ill and dangerous. America Thayer's son, Charles Thayer, had this to say about that ruling. It is tough to understand how somebody can commit cold-blooded murder, plan to do it, tell everyone they're going to do it, have a motive to do it, and then somehow be considered insane. Should the judge make that determination, Alexis will likely be sent to the Minnesota Security Hospital in St. Peter, which is a secure facility. At the time of editing this video, Alexis is still in custody at the Scott County Jail. The commitment trial is currently scheduled for August 28, 2023. John, what route hotel number? 237. He's going to go start writing the warrant. Yep. Yes. So, all right, we'll just look at the warrant transfer. 